Welcome back everybody to YouTube's premier storyboarding channel, Ink and Grow Rich. Let's have ourselves a quick and fun little social experiment. When I see the word Walmart, you think... That's right, the correct answer is fresh produce. Or at least it will be if Miss Jennifer Gardner has anything to say about it. That's what I'm talking about. See, Walmart has recently teamed up with our pal Jim to help steer the world away from their less savory reputation towards a new golden age of delicious crisp vegetables. So, without any further ado, let's slap some lipstick on this pig. Walmart has recently launched a new community campaign which essentially focuses on the produce section of their stores. This campaign consists of three commercials and in each of them, Jennifer Garner sits down with an actual Walmart employee to discuss that person's favorite recipe. It's supposed to be one of those, this person is not an actor, real world commercials. We've all seen them a dozen times over. The spot we'll be working on today is called Associate. And as you can see in these agency boards here, Jennifer sits down with a Walmart associate to talk about the importance of healthy eating while, for some baffling reason, thumbing through an old photo album. We'll then cut to some in-store footage of the two of them picking out fresh ingredients, and then get some shots of them cooking in the associate's kitchen. Finally, we'll end on a huge backyard scene where the whole family is enjoying the meal. Next up, I've got this huge collection of location photos which we'll go through as we draw, as well as this casting sheet with a single photo of said Walmart associate. Most important of all, I just got off the phone with the directors, there's actually two of them on this game, and they gave me this shot list that you see here. They've got it laid out like a bunch of index cards. I, I've never actually seen a shot list organized like this before, but you know what? Everybody works differently. Each of these squares represents a shot, and again, we'll go through them as we draw. I took the liberty of briefly reading through the shot list in advance and downloaded a ton of reference photos, which I think will come in handy. As always, I like to start by just churning out some very quick, loose initial sketches and try to get them in front of the directors as quickly as possible. So, let's get started with that. Okay, the first card in the shot list reads, Wide Shot, Jennifer Gardner and Associate at a wooden kitchen table talking. Let's start by dropping in one of the location photos and very loosely sketching these two in. I'll have Jennifer sitting camera left and the associate at the head of the table. Shot two. Jennifer Gardner and associate sit at table, turn to camera, and talk to camera together, introducing themselves to shot. Ignoring that baffling butchery of the English language, let's just go ahead and copy the previous sketch, paste, resize, and then have their faces addressing camera. And while I'm at it, I'll swing the camera around to the right a bit so it doesn't feel too similar to the previous shot. Next, I'll go back into my location folders and pick out a background that will roughly match this angle and go ahead and drop that in. Shot three, tight shot of Jennifer asking associate a question about the recipe. These are the shots I love drawing the most, close-ups, because it's simple, there's no anatomy to be bothered with, and very little background or perspective. I could pump these frames out all day long. Shot four, tight shot of associate talking to Jennifer. Essentially, this is just a matching reverse of the previous shot. So we'll roughly sketch in our good pal Ricky, toss on some glasses, and lickety split just like that, we're moving on to shot five. Tight shot of associate showing Jen pictures on table of his family and his grandmother. Now when they say tight shot, I'm gonna assume that they mean a tight shot of a photo album. It would be super weird to cut from a close-up of the associate to another close-up of the associate, so I'm just gonna go ahead and shoot this between the two of them, looking down at the photos. Shot six, wide shot of associate and Jen walking down long aisle of fresh produce at Walmart, picking food out. I like these directors a lot, so I'm gonna to continue to ignore the curiously bad grammar. I was feeling a bit lazy at this point, so I popped open my stock sheet of women walking and just dropped two of them in place here. Yes, I know the associate is a guy, but in terms of body language, it really isn't going to matter much. Next, I drop my perspective point right in the middle of the frame and sketch out the produce section from there. And then boom, just like that, page one of the initial sketches is done. Moving on to page two, we have shot seven, tight shot of fresh food, camera moving down the aisle with a dolly move, not side to side, but towards the food. Fresh onions, peppers, tomatoes, cilantro. Okay, so for now, I'm just gonna scribble in the three rows of vegetables all receding away from camera. So it's as if the camera was sitting in the wall of produce, turned 90 degrees, and then just traveling forward. Shot eight, tight shot of the associate picking up some cilantro. I went ahead and dropped that one photo of Ricky that we have down in the gutter here, just so I can have something to reference while I loosely sketch him in. 
and on the left over here, I've got him holding up a bunch of cilantro as if he were examining it. Shot 9. Wide shot, two shot, associate showing Jen cilantro bunch and talking about freshness and smelling it. Okay, so I feel like this one is pretty self-explanatory. I'm going to roughly scribble in the two characters, Ricky on the left and Jen on the right. Ricky is holding up that bunch of cilantro, and I'm going to have Jen leaning in slightly just to imply that she's smelling it. Next, I'll hint at the background and maybe widen out just a bit so they're not crowding the frame too much. Shot 10, overhead shot. See reference of ingredients in bowls and starting to make empanadas. Okay, what they're referring to here is a link that I was emailed earlier to this website which teaches you the fine art of empanada making. So I'm gonna copy one of the images, paste it into place, and then just get to work copying. For all of the plates, I'm gonna use the oval shape tool that I've got here in Corel Painter. If you're not using Painter, I'm sure whatever program you're using has an equivalent. You'll notice I'm also adding in a number of additional plates to this image because I want the table to be packed with ingredients. It feels like more of an interesting shot that way. Then I'm just going to scribble in some random ingredients to each of these plates. And finally, I'm going to go back to that reference page they sent me, copy a set of hands making empanadas, entering from the top of the frame, duplicate them, and add a set coming from the bottom as well. So now it looks like they're both getting busy making some food. Moving on to shot 11, a medium shot of Jen talking to Ricky while they are filling empanadas. Camera angle is from across the kitchen island. Diving back into that folder of location photos, I'm going to select a three-quarter shot of the kitchen and keep that at the top of my screen while I loosely sketch it out here. And with that out of the way, I'll rough in our two eager characters and just make it look like they're doing something at the island. Shot 12, tight shot of hands stuffing empanadas. So again, I'm just gonna grab a photo from the website they sent me and trace right over it, just adding a number of additional bowls filled with ingredients. And that brings us to the end of page two. It's a bit rough for sure, but I feel like it's starting to come together. Shot 13, close up, tight shot of Jen listening to Ricky. Another close up of Jen. So first I'm roughing in the oval shape of her face. Next I split the face horizontally at the eye line and vertically along where the nose will be. Toss in some hair and then figure out where the mouth and the bottom of the nose will sit. I'm not referencing any photos of Jen here, which is largely why it looks nothing like her. I'm essentially just drawing a random female face at the moment. If I have time, I'll swing back around later to clean all of this up. There we go, I think that tells the tale for now. Shot 14, Ricky placing empanada in oven. Earlier, I took the liberty of downloading this reference photo. Now I'm going to flip it, paste it into place, and just trace away. Shot 15, smoking empanadas coming out of oven, Ricky pulling them out. Okay, so this is just going to be a close-up of the baking tray with Ricky's gloved hands removing it from the oven. Okay, right about here is where things really started to fall apart for me. See, this whole time I had their shot list up on my screen and I was just going shot to shot. Unfortunately, I hadn't realized that I was zoomed in on the shot list, so this entire column of shots on the right here went completely unnoticed. Now I've got to backtrack and drop these additional shots into place before I can move forward. Rookie mistake, I know, but hey, what are you going to do? And being as I'm going to have to revisit these earlier frames anyway, I decided to just go ahead and clean up a few of the rougher ones as I go along. Such as this close-up of Ricky holding the cilantro. It's a lot easier to just grab a reference photo, drop it into place, and trace it. Next up, we have a tight shot of chopping cilantro on a cutting board. Another trip to the good old interweb resulted in this nifty little reference photo of some hands chopping cilantro. So once again, I'm gonna drop it like it's hot and get to work tracing.
Next shot, Jen and Ricky, white shot, placing ingredients in empanada and rolling. Employing yet another reference photo I found online, I'm going to drop this into place, flip it, and you guessed it, start tracing. Now, the girl in this photo is grating cheese, and that's just not going to work for me. So, I'm going to draw her hands down here on the table, stuffing an empanada instead. And, as I did in the earlier shots, I'm going to crowd the table with different plates and bowls, each filled with various ingredients. So by this point, I imagine my process is starting to become fairly predictable. For the background of this shot, I'm going to once again go through my location folder, find an angle of the kitchen that resembles the one I sketched, and use it as reference while I draw out the final background. The next shot, tight, beautiful food shot of empanadas with steam on a beautiful plate. Going back to the website that the directors sent me, I found this photo of a plate full of empanadas, which I think will work perfectly for this shot. You know, this might be a good opportunity to talk about the fact that ever since I started posting these videos and began sharing my method with people, I've been receiving a lot of criticism from viewers concerning just how much tracing I do. One person on Reddit commented, Look, I get that you do what you need to do in order to get the job done, but aren't you afraid that the directors you work with are going to see these videos and realize that you're tracing? I laughed and replied, Look, man, no offense, but the fact that you asked that question means you have huge misconceptions about how this job works. The question implies that me tracing photos is some kind of a dirty secret that I like to keep from directors. Nothing could be further from the truth. I routinely trace right in front of them. And in fact, directors frequently send me photos and tell me to just trace this picture. This job we're doing here today is a perfect example of that. These directors sent me the link to this website specifically because they wanted me to trace images just like this plate of empanadas. The only thing people in this industry care about is that you get the job done. Okay, next shot. Ricky putting empanadas onto table Shot from the side of the table as he leans in and smiles, placing tray onto table. Next up, we have camera pulls back, dolly move over the top of table to reveal everyone eating at table. Getting close to the end here, we have wide shot of everyone sitting at table eating. Camera does a slow dolly push toward table from end of table. Camera just above table height. And that takes us to the last shot. Jennifer Gardner standing to camera with people in background. Reference the last board. Okay, so when the directors say reference the last board, what they're really referring to is the last frame in this agency board, which is just Jen talking to camera with the whole family dinner going on in the background. So, I'm gonna copy and paste that image, but I'm gonna lose the hat and I'm gonna keep her arm down by her side.
All right, that's just about gonna wrap it up for this episode. In part two, we'll shoot those sketches out to the director, get his feedback, and then draw up the final boards. If you have any questions about what I did here today, or just want to tell me how much you hate me, drop on down to the comment section below and hit me up, Buttercup. And as always, if you found this video insightful or entertaining, or would like to see more of them in the future, go ahead and hit that subscribe button below. Until next time, this is Vinny Delay with Make It Grow Rich.